Hi. Today I'm going to be using the constant acceleration kinematics equations uh, for this particular scenario. So the person throws a ball straight up into the air and returns to their hand in 3.8 seconds. So um, based on just that little bit of information plus some things that we can logically deduce, I'm going to determine the velocity that the ball left this person's hand plus the maximum height. So this kinematics problem, I'm going to start out by uh, writing down uh, the explicit information that's given in the description, plus we're going to uh, make some uh, deductions. Once I do that, then we'll find an, a relevant equation, do the algebra, and then uh, plug in the numbers and get our answer. So the explicit information is that the time interval, okay, the time from the ball leaving their hand to the ball returning to their hand is 3.8 seconds, okay? Explicit information based on the problem uh, description. Okay, so I've got uh, one bit of information. Typically, the constant acceleration kinematics equations, which, which we're going to be using, are uh, uh, written as having four variables in them. And so that means that we need to uh, deduce three things before we can do um, do any algebra or calculation. So that's a, that's a common mistake that people make in kinematics is they try to find an equation first and then think about what it is they know and want to calculate. Okay, So let's start by get the information gathering first. So this is the explicit bit of information. Um, you might pause the video and think about what sorts of implicit information are given in this scenario. Okay, so uh, first thing is to think about the acceleration of this ball. So once the ball leaves this person's hand, it is in free fall. So it's under the influence of gravity alone, and it will accelerate at a rate of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So um, that's that's first piece. Uh, I mean, I never said that this occurs on Earth, but usually that's a that's a reasonable assumption. Okay, uh, second uh, bit of implicit information is that because the ball starts and ends at the same location, the displacement is actually zero. Okay, and this is a little bit counterintuitive because it seems to imply that the ball uh, didn't do anything at all. But uh, displacement just compares the initial to the final position. It doesn't t uh, tell you about distance travel. Okay. So now I have three pieces of information. I need to find an equation that relates these three variables to the unknown of interest, which is the initial velocity. So you might pause the video, uh, look at the list of constant acceleration kinematics equations, and find one that uh, includes these three knowns plus the one unknown initial velocity. OK, so here's one that will work. So the displacement equals the initial velocity times the time interval plus one half the acceleration times the time interval squared. Okay, and your your textbook might look a little bit different from this, but um, it's basically the same equation as you, as you might see elsewhere. And so I'm gonna go ahead and throw, now I'm gonna start to do the algebra. I am gonna throw in this zero just to uh, make the math a little bit uh, simpler. So the algebra is pretty straightforward. Um, I'm not going to go over all the details. This is physics, not uh, algebra class. So let's uh, the ultimate solution to, to initial velocity in terms of uh, these knowns will end up being this. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and throw in the numbers. So we know that the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and the time interval is given as 3.8 seconds. OK, so I can throw those numbers into my calculator, and it will spit out an answer of 18.6 meters per second second. Okay, so uh, I've calculated based on the one-dimensional kinematics equations uh, how fast this ball had to have leave this person's, have, has to have left their, their hand uh, in order to return in 3.8 seconds. Okay, so next problem is to 
find out what the maximum height is. So you need to be careful here. Uh, some of this information is still true, some of it is not. So I'm gonna treat the initial condition as the ball leaving the person's hand. The final condition is now up here at the top of the trajectory. So um, once again, uh, gather information um, and I want you to do that. Go ahead and pause the video and try to think of three things that are true uh, for the initial condition being the ball leaving the person's hand and then the final condition being at the turnaround point. Okay, so uh, one thing that I know is this initial velocity. So the initial velocity in the y direction is 18.6 meters per second. Okay, that's still true. Um, this is also still true. So once the ball leaves their, this person's hand and it goes all the way up to the top, it's under the influence of gravity alone. So negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then the last piece of information is a little bit tricky. Uh, this is actually not true. Okay, 3.8 seconds is no longer true. It is true that it is half, but uh, I don't want to have to prove that to you. So um, we'll go with something that's a little more obvious. And that is that at the turnaround point, the velo instantaneous velocity is zero. So if it wasn't uh, a velocity of zero, that would mean that it's either on its way up. If, you, if we asserted it had a, a velocity that was positive, that would mean it was still moving up, but it had yet to reach its uh, maximum height. If it had a negative velocity, it would have uh, mean that it was on its way down and then at some point in the past it was higher. So it has to have an instantaneous velocity of zero at the turnaround point. Okay, so once again, I have three pieces of information. I need to find a kinematics equation that relates these three knowns to the unknown, which is displacement. So once again, maybe pause the video try to track down an equation that, re, uh, that relates the three knowns to the unknown displacement. Okay, so the one I would use is this one. Okay, so that equation uh, has the three knowns plus the unknown, uh, the unknown delta y. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and throw in the zero uh, in order to keep the algebra pretty simple. And then I'm just going to start um, uh, solving for delta y. Again, I'm going to skip over all the algebra steps. I expect you should be able to do that. And so delta y, the displacement, ultimately ends up being minus the initial velocity squared over twice the acceleration. Okay, and when I take these numbers and throw them into this equation, I ultimately get a uh, displacement of 17.7 meters. Okay, so uh, once again, uh, we uh, just to summarize, I took this little bit of information, 3.8 seconds, gathered some um, implicit information and was able to determine the initial velocity plus the maximum height based on the uh, one-dimensional kinematic constant acceleration kinematics equations. Thank you.